a quite a large bill. It's got 233 clauses. It's it's probably one of the, the heftier ones. We don't send this through the post. What it what it's doing is bringing together two different bills. Sexual offences bill that, that we've had on the statute since 1992. It, that needs updating, and also the obscene publications bill um, act, which again needs up, updating, because what this deals with is both how we define abuse and offences, but also deals with the way it's being carried out, particularly online using mobile phones, using new technologies, which isn't really covered by the previous bill. So is, is that really what it's about then? It's about modernisation? It is indeed. It's about modernisation. It's about bringing um, our laws up to date. Again, sec- the, any Sexual Offences Act really reflects the feeling of the time in terms of um, what we consider to be abuse, but also some aspects of morality. In the past, we've seen the Sexual Offences Act's outlawing homosexuality, um, being very draconian in terms of what people can and can't do. What we're now doing is is bringing forward um, a bill that I hope will resonate with Tim World and we'll be able to define nowadays what we consider is right and wrong, what we consider we need to do as a society to protect people from some of the worst crimes going in terms of sexual offences. Now, this was something that went out to public consultation. I think it closed a little bit earlier this year. What was the response like to that? Um, It wasn't bad. As I said, it is a very large bill. Some of it is quite technical um, in terms of how we define pornography, um, how we deal with things like child sexual abuse. So it it, it attracted over 200 responses, some from professional organisations as well. And on top of that, we've obviously been talking with the constabulary quite closely to make sure that we give them the tools that they need um, to to um, effectively protect people and bring those accused of sexual offences to trial in, in an efficient way. But the um, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone who took part in the consultation. We got some really interesting um, results from that that has actually changed the bill as it's being brought forward, particularly in, in terms of issues about consent, issues um, uh, about how we protect people, and also anonymity in terms of criminal cases. How important is that aspect then to make sure that this bill reflects what the public wants? I think it's crucial. One of the aspects, particularly about um, sexual offences against women, is that we know that the, the, the reporting of them is quite low. It's even worse, actually, with sexual offences against men. And sometimes that's because people don't believe that they're going to be believed when they get to court. We have to make sure that people trust the system, that they trust the legislation we've got, and that they also trust that if they report a crime to the police, it will be taken through the courts and that they will be treated in the right way. So anonymity for victims and witnesses in terms of trials is extremely important. Also, within this legislation, we've got anonymity for the person accused of a particular offence as well, and the ability to have that. So all these are trying to make sure that people, if they are victims of of sexual abuse, victims of crime, they've got actually a trust in the system to be able to deliver that justice that they seek. You mentioned a little earlier that this this kind of bill tends to be reflective of of the time. How important is it that laws in this area are, are kept up to date regularly? That's a very good question. I think it's crucial. Um, and, and looking through through the history books, we we had a, an act in 1967. We then updated that in 1992. Um, in the UK, they updated it in 2003. We're, we're overdue. And one of the things about this, this current administration, certainly the Minister Malarkey, is he's keen to make sure that our, our legislation is up to date so we can actually protect people in the right way, um, but also, as I said, give the, the police and the courts the right tools to actually apply justice.